Hello and welcome to Dog's Life. This is going to be a uh, very more involved episode than the other ones because we're actually doing two areas in one today because the areas are much more intertwined than the previous areas have been. Maybe. And yeah, that's starting was from the game itself. That wasn't the recording as far as I recall. We can tell because it's not desynced completely. <laughs> So, uh, next we're gonna we're gonna head to this cable car, and we'll see what's actually happening up on the mountain, beyond what we've already done. So first, the mountain top. We'll finally release this guy from his little prison. Yep. Because there's also dog in there as well. And you move it out of the way. Which is what we really care about. Thanks, boy. I owe you one. So here's some free advice. Avoid the local dog catcher. They say that dogs who get sent to the pound are never seen again. You're a smart pooch. Wanna earn a bone? My kid brother went climbing and now he's stranded somewhere out on Mount Miniwawa. Can you find him? Watch out for the dreaded rolling rocks. Looks like I'll never unravel that dog napping mystery. Ah, uh, well, I can't refuse the chance to have a little fun. Here's a bone for getting me out of there. Jake loves I don't know why Jake's being so defeatist there. He knows where he is, he doesn't just doesn't know where he's going yet. But he has heard the place they mentioned a few times, and as have we. I guess he's just not paying attention. So let's get a few things sorted out in here first of all. Uh, there are a couple of synths in here, we'll leave the old one for now because it's tradition. And we'll go f move. This man is being a bastard. This is the only area where this really happens because it's the only area where an NPC really goes near a building. The old RPG issue. <laughs> so let's collect a few cents and see what we can find along the way. We're going to do everything in a much less linear fashion than normal. Uh, you know, we're not just going to do one thing then another. We're going to kind of be doing everything together because some of these purple steps in this area we actually can't reach yet. So we're going to be streamlining things a little bit by starting with oh, these red scents. Love the smell of toe jam in the morning. While collecting the purples on the way to avoid missing any. This area is much smaller than the uh, previous areas, uh, but it's uh, interesting in its own right, it's got some pretty cool vistas that I quite like, even if the horizon is a little blurry. And here's our first real challenge with this dog. One, go. I mean I call it a challenge that's been really kind. <laughs> I mean he waited for us, how sweet. And boom. This is kind of tricky because he has a very tight time limit to do what we need to do with him. As you may have heard there from Jake, he is ten times stronger than him, but also five times slower. So we're just going to amble down the mountain with this guy to objective, which is actually only the part of the level we haven't seen yet, which I'm looking forward to showing off because it's the most interesting part of the level. So let's get there. Loping along like the thickly built dog we are. This is just me trying to find the slope down. <laughs> it can be a little disguised sometimes if you don't remember where it is exactly. But here we are. This log is quite heavy. Jake cannot move it. This guy, however... Yeah, we're dealing with the Incredible Hulk over here, apparently. So, let's get this log moved. Now, as you can see, it forms a nice bridge across this massive chasm. And there we go. Yeah, for some reason it doesn't register that you've actually done what the dogs need to do with him. Uh, I don't know why, it doesn't have any kind of cutscene or anything for when you actually moved a log or anything like that. It just counts as a tiny bit running out and you failing. Probably because it's not completing a side quest in its own right, it's just altering the environment. Luckily that log stays moved, so you never have to do that again. 
and there's a little hidden bone up here. And as you can tell from where all the yellows are, this will be the site of the P-Marking game uh, for much later on. For now though, let's do these blue scents, oh, which are just yeah. on a straight line down the mountain, but they're actually surprisingly tricky. Because as you can see, they give just long enough between each scent that you actually lose a second between every other scent. Which means by the time you get to the bottom of the mountain, you have very little room for error. We have to be perfect here. As you can see, we only had two second leeway. If we got in any way lost at that, like if it was a blind corner for example, that would have been really annoying to do. So let's grab that bone and see what we can find elsewhere. Once I've remembered to go back to these scents here, that it teleported me away from when I got the reds. There we are. Unfinished business complete. I quite like the fallen tree. It serves no purpose, but it's a nice little environmental detail. This is just me reminding myself that there were no purple scents on this slope, because this was not where I wanted to leave them. Because there's some areas of this game you want to make sure that you get all the purple scents in so you don't have to revisit them again. But now we are completely done with this half of the mountaintop. Let's finally collect that promised bone. Boom. Who could and explore the other half of the level. After one last little bit of unfinished business on this middle area. You may have noticed that platform up there. And this is actually quite tricky to get up. As you can see right here, this slope can be quite weird at times. Part of the uh, part and parcel of being a character that's built very low to the ground, I guess. He's going to have trouble getting up certain things. <laughs> so let's get back down there to the bridges and see what we can find down there with Jake. Because there's actually quite a lot of bits of that area that we didn't see as the other dog. So let's cross this big bridge and find get to this bone here. And then we'll see why I quite like this little area over here more than wow, the other areas uh, wow. in this section of the game, anyway. Because this then leads you to a little path that you may not have noticed. That goes just underneath this bridge. If we just get under the rope here and get under the big mm, log, we get to this little area. It's kind of Steve. not quite secret, but it's hidden enough that it's interesting to find it and realize, oh, this is where the missing sense I didn't have were, or the missing bone. So let's head down here and explore this little ledge that really has no reason to exist, it's, but I quite like that they modeled it. I mean, they could have put the sense anywhere else, like oh, even on yes. the mountain slope, Life but they put them here. I quite like that they added just a little extra thing to the environment. That's something I like about this, these games in general. Uh, is that they always have that little bit of effort, even in a game you wouldn't expect. Like, uh, for an amusing thing that I noticed as well, another game I've been playing, uh, that has a similar kind it's of bit of a jank, online. but surprisingly interesting gameplay, uh, the Wallace and Gromit Were-Rabbit game, uh, it actually is by the same developers, Frontier. Which is something I didn't notice, so I actually compared the boxes, and I was like, oh, hey, cool. <laughs> so I think I can happily say I kind of like Frontier as a developer, and may look into what other games they've done to see if they have the similar level of, uh, if not polish, interest to them that the other games I've been playing from them did have. Because, again, while the controls were never perfect and the level design had something to be uh, desired, it still was enough. Like The games are interesting enough to get around that, and I enjoy that quite a lot. So let's snap back. Might be head down the mountain to grab that bone. Well, it needs Jake, to be said that Curse of the Wearables is a much harder game than this. <laughs> See ya. That was just me heading up this slope now so we can finish these yellows. The cut before that cut was just be cutting out a menu. Oh, I just love that was a little bit. Jam in the morning. That's nice. Now let's finish collecting these yellows. And then hop back down the mountain to grab the uh, one in the shack that we saw earlier. Here we are. And boom. At last. 
I this is actually a P-marking game that I don't mind. Let's go. Because Three, two, it's much one. more interesting layout. It's got a definite theme to it. It's got a kind of spiderweb look to it. Uh, it's a much bigger track than the others, and it has plenty of really big squares, so you don't have to worry about tiny little weird fiddly ones. And theoretically, it has that big octagon in the middle that you could theoretically get for a large amount of points, but it's just not worth it. It's just kind of pointless to try because it just moves up in a stalemate as you and him just go rolling around the circle like an idiot. Or he'd just win because he'd be getting other squares while you were trying to get the octagon. That's really something you kind of have to work into the strategy if you want to try and get it. But this is just much easier to go around this outside edge and just grab all the other tall vectors instead. Long live the trapezium. Stop peeing on my pee! Oh, he got a square. Good for him. I say square, you know what I mean. And there's our final primary bone for this area. Except for the one that we haven't quite got yet. We haven't found that guy's brother. And this is why I'm tying these two areas together. Because when you see this next area, you will see why I did not want to have to go through it twice. I just cleared it out on the way up, because this next area can be really annoying to navigate. You may have noticed this sign pointing into this little cave, and the mention of rolling rocks. This is where this game becomes very video gamey for one area. Uh -oh. If I'm not super alert, I'm gonna get squished. Seriously, this is ridiculous. This is just silly. The other areas have had some level of uh, realism that I quite like, so they feel like areas that would actually exist. This is me showing what happens when one of the rocks hits you, but I'll be cutting every other one out, so the strong up the mountain is going to be kind of a mess, but that's because there's a lot of sense hidden in the paths of these boulders, because Frontier can be kind of dick sometimes, apparently. So let's just sweep up here dodge this next coming boulder and then just dart out for these tents here. There's always a way you can stand or move to avoid the boulders uh, completely. There's always a little corner that isn't untouched by them which is a, so you can get up there without much of a problem. So let's just do a little platforming up around here. Now yeah, you can kind of skip half of it if you need to on replays. You'd, what most players would do is come up that little slope here, go up this way and then fall down that middle slope and get annoyed, but I know it's just a useful shortcut to get back up again. That one I missed entirely with that jump. Thank you, Jake. There's a lot of bones on this little slope. This area is very tiny, but it took me a long time to get up here. I cut out six minutes of attempts at this because of those bloody boulders, as you'll see from how choppy it gets as we collect the purple sets in the paths. I just want to show off that quite like you can see the antenna from here and here's the platforming that we're going to do. This set of logs can be kind of weird to get on because you can't really approach it from the side. You have to get on it directly from the bottom or Jake will kind of hop over it and it just won't work and it'll be really weird and awkward. Yeah, there's a lot of very clustered mm, sense in this uh, area because well. of the fact that it's very tiny. It's basically just a straight line to the top. But it's really more of a challenge level than an actual, like, area, so to speak. So, let's dig up this bone and continue to the most infuriating like part, the part that I had to cut most of the uh, attempts out of. This may actually be some of the hardest stuff in this particular game, largely because of avoiding the boulders. Because if you don't know how, where, how to move, it can be quite tricky. As you will see, because this part's going to be a bit of a clusterfuck. <laughs> As I balance between catching all the scents and cutting out all the knocks on the head of the boulders. Boop. Hit me and again, boop. my friend. Yeah, you do not want me to watch me walking all the way back up that slope. There's nothing there of interest after this point. <laughs> and look at all those scents in the path of that boulder. Fuck you. Let's take this up and see what else we can do up here. Oh, yummy! 
that's just what it looks like when you go in first person when the bugs doing the little dance between Jake's paws thing. I just found that kind of amusing. So, oh, we've got yes. a bone, and now we've got some food, just to make sure we've topped off our health, because I... just in case you're getting hit by another boulder, really. Because you can't really die in this game, but you do get very slow when badly injured. <laughs> and that's annoying. So, let's dodge these expertly and get up here. And we, as you've noticed, we have just found Zip the Conductor's the brother. Conductor Travel Plater, you know what I mean. So let's head down there and just get every cent in this little area because, oh, we just want to get this done before these boulders, so we never have to go into the path of these boulders again. Let's just grab everything, come on. Move! And we get to pull out of the path of the boulders, so yay. This is where the uh, trick sequences get a little trickier and actually start getting quite difficult to remember it's because you suddenly need to start doing multiple big tricks in a row. Or at least multiple three button combinations anyway. Your move, my man. I can only assume he was tired on that one because that's just... <laughs> that's hardly even Cyber says. Yeah, these buttons are starting to get a little long, and they have just it's about no filled the screen done. now. <laughs> That's about as complicated as these get, though. The next one's pretty much just on par with this, but we'll get to that when we get to it. Let's finish mimicking him and learn to roll over. I mean, Jake can't roll over normally, but he can do that. <laughs> he skipped a step, didn't he? You may have noticed the bandy battle around this dog's neck. In reality, it's water, but because of this game wasn't stereotypes, in the game it's probably bandy. <laughs> As <laughs> and there we got trolled by a boulder. This is just me showing off the uh, some sweet moves dodging. Them. <laughs> oh, yummy! I always found that quite funny that boulders are still coming during the cutscene, so that's pretty much unavoidable. <laughs> it's kind of a dick move. So let's start the minigame sense now. Grab the oranges first, let's get this one done first. And this particular tug of war actually gave me a little trouble because I don't know if I just got a bit lazy with mashing the circle button or whether he's just much tougher than most of them, but we're 50 bones ahead and he's still got a few good tugs in his direction. Come on. Worthy opponent for a change. Then again, here's three times Jake's size. Yuck! This guy's mouth is full of warm drool. Well, at least his heavy coat means I'm nice and toasty. That boulder got lucky. Oh my head. Hey. Dog, if I draw a map of my position, can you take it to my brother, the cable car operator? My god, that normal Easy mapping boy. on that helmet is take atrocious. This hat to my big brother, the cable car operator, and show him the map of my location inside. I think my favorite things with these games is relating to the hats, because I like that Jake actually just wears them instead of carrying them in his mouth. Partially because it's convenient, because it means he can still pick things up while carrying the hat. Which is quite a nice little thing to do, allow you to do. It means you don't have to come back up here for it, you can just keep it with you while clearing out the rest of this mountain. Which we're going to do now. Bam. I'm the king of bones. This This'll digging track is much more in-depth than the others, as you can see from the fact that it ends pretty close to where it started, and there's a lot of crossing over going on over there as well. And it gets obscured a few times by the trees, which makes it a little more interesting than the others, which I quite like. I like that they always go to some effort to make each of these sort of minigame 
arena kind of thing, for want of a better word, visually distinct from each other, by giving them either a pattern follow, or some kind of thing linked to them, like the fact that this one uses the trees to uh, mark the course a little bit. That's pretty cool as well. Of all this, is, this is still fairly easy because, again, we are 50 votes ahead of this guy, so he has no chance. But it's nice that we have that going on. It's nice that we're making an effort to make it at least feel more difficult, even if it isn't. So here we are approaching the final two digs. Kind of curious if this game was over on the Xbox 360, would you even unlock an archaeologist achievement for these? And yeah, it's interesting that the game seems to be sponsored by Pedigree. I'm assuming it's an American oh, band yummy. as well, but it's pretty big in the UK as well. Not certain if Americans also have the dog food pedigree chum, but there we go, we've cleared out the mountainside. So now we never have to come back to Hell Boulders ever again. And we've got the hat, so let's turn to the mountaintop to wrap things up. And here we go. Let's follow the boulder. Boink! What's that? My brother's climbing hat. Good human. Clever human. There's a map inside. Now I can call that rescue helicopter. Carry a bone in my pocket in case oh, a strange helicopter. dog provides a vital clue that aids in a rescue. Please take it. My trousers were beginning to smell. <laughs> so long, boy. Have a good day. And watch out for that dog catcher. They say he's shipping strays off to Boom City. Oh, tastes that great. That certainly is interesting that they actually justified him carrying a bone in his pocket, even though it was the dumbest possible way of doing so. But now we have 87 bones. We're done with the mountain top inside. And we actually only have one more area, I believe, of Lake Miniwawa to go. As you may have noticed, that one last road leading out from the high street last time. So, we will be exploring that after Jake's taken a little nap in the next video. If you've enjoyed this, I'll see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>